Vietnam. Peace, family. Peace, peace, peace. Been a long time. Give me one second to get my uh, phone together. Okay, a little small brightness. Peace. How is everybody doing this beautiful, beautiful magic, magical moon day? Magical lunar moon day. How is everybody feeling? I hope everybody's feeling wonderful. One second. Testing, testing, one, two. Let me know if anybody um, is having uh, troubles hearing me. Everybody want to hit me up. Peace, family. Anybody out there? Can you hear me good? Before I start, let me just make sure um, everybody can hear me. Peace, brother Baba Soul. Can you hear me? Uh, today is just, whew, it's just a beautiful day. Just like every day, though. Okay, cool. Checking in. Yes, you can hear me. You can hear me. Cool, cool, cool. Well, today, family, first off, I just want to say, Today is a blessed day, just like any other day. And I'm hoping that everybody is having a good day. Um, I hope everybody's feeling blessed and thankful. Um, and just being in the now moment. Just being right now in this now moment. Before um, we get in today, I want to talk, speak a little bit about um, the fifth dimension. And uh, my perspective on how I see the fifth dimension. And uh, my experience with... Um, you know, battling third dimensional thoughts, um, things, you know, stopping me from to move into a new perspective, to move in that mind frame of uh, being in the fifth dimension. So um, I want to talk a little bit about that today. But before we do that, um, before I have this talk with everybody, um, I just did me a, a meditation to um, really open myself up to be this true conduit that I am to just make sure that I uh, surrender and allow myself to be filled, filled up with light, love, and um, and this and this message that I'm about to receive from you guys. So what before we get started, what I would like everybody to do, no matter where you at, you at work, it's not going to be long. It's just something to make sure that you're in a, um, put you in a heart space, put you in a heart center so that your heart um and, and your soul and your being and your essence is open up to this message that I'm about to deliver. Um, a little louder. Uh, close, okay, am I, am I close enough? Can you hear me now? Maybe I'm covering the mic. Is everything okay now? A little louder. Okay, I, I hope I'm, I'm good right now. Um, so what I want everybody to do is to take your left hand and place it in the middle of your chest. So, I'm going to be right here about right where that heart chakra is. And what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to take three deep breaths. So, I want you to inhale deep. Hold it for a three count. And then sigh it out. Ah. that weary, all that stress. Ah. Releasing it all. It no longer serves you anymore. Releasing it all. Today is a new day, a new start. So now what I want you to do is continue to place your left hand on your, in the middle of your chest, and I want you to repeat after me. I am a love center. In my time, in my space, and I realize it, and I love it. Feel that. Let's say it again. I am a love center in my time, in my space, and I realize it, and I love it. Feel it. Own it. Know it. We are 
love centers. In our time, in our space, and we realize it, and we love it. We love it. Set Nam family. Set Nam is truth is my identity. And so it's just like any other greeting. So by saying that by, to somebody, no matter what differences or no matter what, you know, separation of religion or gender that we may have for each other on a 3D realm, on a 5th perception, is speaking to the soul. So it's a greeting to the soul. So that's set nah. So, 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 let's hop into this 5th dimension, this 5th dimension uh, talk that everybody's speaking of. And uh, sometimes we take things real complex and literal on this uh, this 3D plane, and it's really not that serious. Um, I remember when I was first thinking of the fifth dimension, I was thinking, oh, man, the fifth dimension. Well, how am I going to do it? Am I going to walk through some magical line and poof, be in a whole new di- different di- different dimension? I was thinking to myself, oh, man, I hope my family's going to be able to take their body over to the fifth dimension. Like, I hope their their light is shining bright enough. So I just, I really didn't know what this fifth dimensional thing was. And then my first eye, my first eye, I don't call it third eye, it's just because um, this eye develops before the, the two physical eyes. So once my first eye began to even become more aware of my surroundings, I noticed that the fifth dimension is just energy. It's a frequency. It's a it's a, it's a state of mind. It's a perception of reality. That's all it really is. It's wholeness. It's oneness. It's no separation. It's the true God state. So, with all that being, okay, I'm sorry if I'm covering the mic. So I'm about to go in, Baba. Let me know. Let me know now. I got my hand all the way up. All the way up. Let me see. My microphone is up. Okay, cool. Cool. So you might not see my face too much, but that doesn't matter. Just receive the message. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit of things that I've been experiencing with this fifth dimensional uh, state of mind. And you can move between the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So some of the things that I started noticing differently that has been changing within me that's on that fifth dimensional reality or that fifth dimensional frequency um, is that time. Time really becomes something that's nothing in a sense. And I say that to say it like you forget the days and the months and the, what time it is. You know, every day is a weekend for you. You're not counting down um, to it gets to a weekend, you're living very in the present moment. You're not thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow or next week or when you get paid next week, this is what you're going to do. Well, how do you know you're going to live to see next week? Well, how do you, or better yet, should I say, how do you know that you're going to be on this physical plane to be able to receive that and buy that at that time? So. Living in the present and knowing that time, in a sense, is an illusion. Time is a cycle. The sun and the moon is not really, it's not, it doesn't really abide by the rules of time. It's supposed to rise at 6 o'clock. It's a cycle. So it's more of it, it's doing what it's supposed to do, do in that cycle and in that now moment. So being in the now moment, what I notice is that you know, because this is nothing that's going to happen overnight. Even I am now processing and making sure that I stay in the present moment and making sure I stay in that fifth dimensional um, mindset. So it's not an easy thing, but practice makes perfect. And the more you see and perceive life differently, the more your reality changes. So I would notice what that I would think about, because right now I'm presently in Puerto Rico. And uh, things were a little bit different. I didn't know my, you know, you never can have any expectations because you just, you never know how things are going to pan out. 
So, you know, I just thought my living situation was going to be a little bit different. I thought I was going to have access to uh, to vehicles and all of that. And right now I'm actually blessed um, to just be able to manifest uh, rides down the mountain. It's like a two-hour walk. But I'll tell you about that a little bit later. So what I've been noticing is that my finances has has been a little different than what I thought it was going to be because I had to put out a little bit more money. But what I start realizing is that I'm always abundant, and I have to live in a present moment. I can't worry about finances for tomorrow or the next day or the next week because I have to be present. Now, I'm not saying that to say splur. I mean, well, you know, if you have, well, I, I have to take that back. I like to play devil's advocate with myself. Abundance is in many different forms and shapes and sizes. So what I was going to say was, if you want to go out and have a shopping spree and spurge, knowing and being in your truths and being in your true power, knowing that uh, your bills are still going to be paid, you can truly and honestly do that. When you get to a, that mind state, that knowing your power mind state. So for me, I just start living presently. If I wanted to go out and get some ice cream, I wasn't going to think about it. Because what I've been knowing is that, noticing that the abundance has been coming to me in so many different shapes and forms. As simple as people giving us rides down the mountain and back up the mountain. You know, people giving us bananas and, and salad and potatoes, just like that. That's abundance. People preparing and cooking meals for me. My partner bringing me tea. That's abundance. So when you start seeing that abundance, Time is an illusion because you live in the now. You live in this now moment. Right now, us talking and you watching me and you at work or whatever you're doing, that's just being in the now. So you just start to notice that time is, is different and that you always live on. You may not be in this physical vessel because you're not even this physical vessel. You're a conduit for light, for the light being. You're just a conduit. That's all you are. And so when your light leaves this vessel, it just leaves this vessel, but it continues. So that brings me into something else about living in the fifth dimensional type of mind frame is reducing fear, letting go of fear, because we all know fear is false evidence appearing like it's here in the living, in the real flesh, but it's not. It's just all things that we anticipate to happen that doesn't really happen. We just thinking that it's going to happen. How are you going to think something's going to happen when it didn't happen? So releasing fear, and that's what I'm battling right now on some things. You know, um, having a little bit of anxiety of my finances, of like feeling lack, but that's living in lack consciousness, and that's what you don't want to do. But I've been aware of my thoughts and my reality, and I, and I had to pull myself up out of that. And I'm like, hold up, no, you're abundant, you're infinite, you're everything. So I've been, you know, I've been really healing here in Puerto Rico. And so I'm here to say it's, it's, it's easier said than done, but it's about having the awareness. So having the awareness of, you know, not being um, anxious or having anxiety of loss, you know, loss of a child, loss of a lover, loss of a family member, loss of self. You know, like your physical vessel, like we have to release it. A white butterfly just flew by. <laughs> but uh, we have to really release that because when you're not presently in and now and you're always thinking about something that's not here, you're not enjoying life. You're suffering. That's suffering. Suffering is this book called um, Untethered Soul. Um, I'll give you the, uh, I'll show you it a little bit later. But it's, um, I think it's in chapter 10 and it speaks about we always worry about stuff every day, not even noticing that we're suffering, that we can't even realize when we're not suffering and enjoying the now moment because we're always suffering about something because we're thinking about time and we're, and we're fearful of things. So the more you step out of fear and the more you tap into your heart and that heart chakra and that light that shines within you and throughout you and through all things, you stop to fear. So perfect example. So as I stated, I'm here in Puerto Rico and um, staying in a mill forest, staying in the bush, 
no phone service or nothing. I had to walk down to the beach just to be able to make this video. And so one night, we, me and um, other two, two, uh, two sisters and my brother and my partner, and we're all out at the beach. And it's, you know, it's about 10 o'clock at night. So we had earlier, we had um, text the gentleman that we're staying with, hey, look, you know, can you come get us, get us? So this was around 7 or 8 o'clock we text them. So, you know, times pass, times pass. It's like 10, it's 11 o'clock. We don't know how we're going to get back to on top of the hill. Mind you, Puerto Rico, filled with dogs. <laughs> I mean, there's dogs all over. Um, so, you know, we're thinking about all these different things and how we're going to get there. And so me, um, what I'm also learning is how to be patient. And that also fall, falls into that time. Because no matter if you try to be on time, you're never on time. And that time is that right time, even if you think you're late. So normally, you know, I'm like, oh, no, nah, I'm ready to go. I'll call an Uber. I don't care about spending the money. I ain't walking. You know, I started, I felt myself, you know, starting to get there. And, and luckily, my partner is so beautiful, so full of love, so full of light. It was like, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Let's just live in the now. We've been manifesting all that we want because we literally manifest a ride every time we go down the hill. So I don't know why I was feeling some type of way like I wasn't going to manifest a ride again. So it was, you know, it was that fear. And lo and behold, we, we start walking. We walked about an hour in, and it was these beautiful angels. They was outside their house. And it was like, hey. We was like, hey. And um, I was like, hey, can we get a ride? They had a big old truck. And it was like, yeah, sure, you know, where do you live? We was like, we don't know, because there's no address for the place we're living at, y'all. There's no address. I don't know where we live. We just live in the bush. So it was like, we can show you. So we hop in the back of the truck, and um, he's like, hey, do you guys, you know, pluck on some herbal essences? <laughs> we're like, yeah, we get down with Mother Earth, Mary Jane. They're like, well, what's up? Well, let's, you know, get out, and let's chill, and let's smoke, and let's talk. And I'm all about living in the now moment. So I'm like, you know what? It's 12, 30, 1 o'clock at night. Why not? Let's go. So we get out the truck. These these people are showing nothing but the uttermost hospitality to us. You know, they're smoking us out. We're, be, we're laughing. We're enjoying. We're living in the lot now moment. They're going to take us home. We held on to our faith. We knew. And we let go of that fear. And we open up our heart. And we let our light shine bright, and they got our light call. They seen our light call. So it was just a blessing to be there with them and to share with them. And, um, you know, share with them, you know, things that we experienced and things they've experienced. And so now we're all cool. We got their numbers and stuff, and we chill with them. So, you know, just releasing the fear, you're able to shine brighter. You're able to um, shine your light, and uh, people are able to, to get the call. So... You know, that's so fear, letting go of fear, letting go of fear puts you at a um, fifth dimensional um, state of mind and, um, you know, not letting time control you because time is going to always be there with or without you because it's just a cycle. So that brings me into manifestation. Um, you start to manifest quickly. When I mean quickly, I mean quickly. Synchronicities pop like it ain't no tomorrow. And it's as simple as what me and my partner do when we get up is we wake up and we set our intent. But we say how exactly we want. You just can't be like, uh, today I want to, I don't know, I want to see, like I wanted to get a ride from this lady. So I didn't want to just say I want to see Miss Sandy. I, wanted, I had to say I want to see Miss Sandy driving down the hill as I'm walking so she could pick me up and take me on a ride, take, give me a ride to go down to the beach with her. And so by telling that genie, the universe, speaking to your DNA and speaking to yourselves, and we're going to get on that too, you create your reality. So speak into existence what you want when you wake up. And most importantly, give thanks to everything that you have. Even if you got two hours in your bank account, give thanks to that. Give thanks to all the experiences in your life. All the experience that you quote unquote say is bad is not really bad. Bad and good is the same thing, just opposite sides of the same coin. 
to giving thanks to everything because every experience that you experience puts you in the now moment. So being grateful for everything in your life, being grateful for walking and breaking your new wine glass. I don't know. I made up something, but being grateful to be aware, not to get mad for breaking a, a wine glass. So just being grateful when you wake up in the morning, count your blessings, you know, be blessed, just be, just be thankful because there's so much to be thankful for. Like there's other, there's people all around us in, in, in what we would call even worse situations that we are in, you know, with no house, with no home, with no husband, with no kids. So just be thankful when you wake up and set your attention. And by doing that, you'll notice that your manifestations um, will definitely, 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 um, just come to you and opening up your heart, you know, blessing. When I wake up in the morning, you know, I give a blessing to everybody. I open up and I visualize my heart center being open, 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 and just surrounding and spreading every being on this planet, every being outside of this planet that's going through anything. So just shining your light alone uh, brings in your manifest uh, manifestations even quicker. So um, then, that, then that next brings me into um, – you know, also not taking life so serious. Um, there's boxes and levels to this game called life. We break one paradigm and we get into the next. And so we have to realize that we have to get out of separation. We have to get out of this separation mind frame. Uh, they're Christian. We're Jew. We're Muslim. She's black. I'm white. Black, black this. Black, white. Our melanin popping, this, that, that, you know what I'm saying? He's gay, I'm straight. Like, I, I can't stress this enough. You're never going to go anywhere in life with separation. You always need somebody because we're all connected. How can you emulate love if you always talking about the white man did this, the white? You have to open up your heart. It's all an illusion. This body is an illusion. You ain't black, you ain't white, you ain't you ain't uh, Chinese or Indian or whatever you may call yourself. You're not a woman, you're not a man. You're a spirit, you're a soul. Or whatever religion or whatever culture that you believe in, whatever that almighty source is, that's what's inside of this vessel. So get out of this paradigm. Y'all let the black, the white man mind trash you and the white man. You know how much energy you waste spending on separation and talking about the white man? Do you realize how much energy that you waste? Do you realize when you sit down and you listen to other people talking about black people this? You 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 know what? You're staying on the 3D. You stay in 3D. So you can stay on this 3D reality talking about the black man and the gay people and um, the transsexuals and all this separation that you focus on, if you want to stay down in the 3D realms and this 3D material life, it's okay. You can do that because we everybody has their place and their time. But I'm just trying to let you know that you're not going to be in this fifth state. God, you think God sits around contemplating about who's gay and straight, about what, who's doing what on the award shows about uh, the Jewish people is this and, and, and Allah is the only way? Do you think a God wary about stuff like that? Do you think love, pure love, worries about things like that? So separation, you're not, you, you cannot and if you want to take it to a little Bible verse for everybody who's, you know, into Christianity and 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 is and is scared and free and, and is scared of spirituality and think of some type of devil worshiping, here's one for you. You know, in the Bible it quotes, you know, nobody's gonna make it in the kingdom of heaven unless they're childlike, and ch children don't judge. They speak their truths. They stand in who, who they are. They'll be mad with their friends for about five minutes and be playing again. They don't judge. Any judgment that they do, they get it from their parents and their parents program it. So if you really want to start living in this fifth dimensional plane, 
You got to give that separation up. The separation is an illusion. It's there to blind you. You have to step out and, 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 and unlift the veil of this illusion and use your first eye to see what's really going on in world in this world. You only see it from these two eyes, so you're only seeing black, white, Chinese, and all of this. It's an illusion. It's a vessel. You trying to tell me that this is you? This can't even be you because you don't even know how to control your body. I'm sitting here right now talking, and I'm breathing. My food's digesting. My cells are repairing, and I ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing, so that's not you. This body is not you. It's like having a car. You just driving the car. The engine is moving and all of that. Although you're working with the car. So getting out of that separation, you know, living label free. Don't worry about such and such in relationship with such and such. What that got to do with you? Don't worry about Jaden Smith wearing a damn dress and you talking about, look what they're doing to our little black boys. Who said that wearing a dress has to do anything with gender? It's clothes. You are not this human being. You are not these clothes. Wake up. Get out of that third dimensional thinking. You are suffering. You are suffering because you're all ways trying to compare and separate that you can't even let love in your life there is no man and there is no woman it is on this 3d plane yes i can turn around and look at a bean and his physique may be a man structure but we are masculine and feminine energy and what that means is we are both giving and receiving energy Spirit beings, light, love. We are not these physical bodies. So get off of it. Oh, I guess the camera wanted to switch. I'm at the beach. But anyway, you know, get off of that. Really just get off of it, y'all. I mean, I know I, I say that um, quite a few often about that because I really want y'all to see that we are all in everything. We are God. And then that brings me to this whole food thing. Live present. Live in the now. Don't take this whole vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, breathitarian, raw fooditarian, <laughs> whatever type of tarians you guys want to do, don't take it so serious. Don't you know epic genetics? Like your mind creates your reality. So I'm not telling you if you're not there at that point to go eat McDonald's every day and eat potato chips and expect that you're going to be healthy. If that's not your reality and your mind's not there yet and you haven't figured out that this is an illusion and you haven't figured out that you can alter your cells and your DNA. When you alternate, when you alter yourself, you alterate your cells. You change your cells. So right now, I can physically say if I go to McDonald's right now and eat every day, I don't think I'll be at that, that point in time where I might not feel it in my body. You know what I'm saying? I'll say all this to say that this is an illusion. Don't take life so serious. Don't take I, I was there. I was a whole, I was a, a man. I was a, 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 um, a vegan activist. Anybody who wasn't vegan who, and who didn't, who ate meat, I judged them. They was wrong. I can't eat that. It's not vegan. I can't wear that. I can't get this tattoo. It's not vegan. Ooh, I can't wear that because some animal did that. Da, 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 da. You're not living. You're not living in the present moment. You know, you, you came here to experience this, this, this physical vessel. You are a conduit. You are a spirit being that's here to experience certain things. In all things, if anything. So all I'm just saying is don't take this whole vegan thing so seriously. Yes, love your body. Take care of your body. Balance your body. But know that you can alter and change matter. Matter. Everything is matter. 
and nothing really even matters <laughs> in the same sense. It's all matter, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so it is, and it is meaning that everything is energy and you can manipulate energy. You can manipulate your cells. You can meditate and see your DNA coming together. And hold on, am I on? Wait a minute. Uh, I don't know what happened. My bad. But you can you can sit down and meditate and um, visualize your DNA coming together and working as one. Or you know your stomach hurting. This is an example. This is something that I went through. I was because when you hold on to stuff emotionally, it echoes throughout every channel. It causes stuff to happen to you physically. So I was. So when you think about constipation, you think about stuff being stuck, stuffed up. You know, you think about something not being able to be released. And it's the same thing with your emotions. When you're holding on to emotional baggage, it can cause you to get constipated physically because it's an energy that echoes throughout all of your body. So what I had to do is I had to meditate and talk to my, my intestines. I had to release what I was holding on to. I had to release on, I had to release that fear that I was holding on to. And I had to speak to my body. Because we control these vessels. It's just like a car. You can control what's inside, but the light beam, the engine, is going to keep driving it. So I had to speak to my, my, my intestines and tell my intestines that it will release in the morning. And so shall it. And so shall it did. Because we are all magical and powerful. So we just we really have to just stop living off the se separation. And... Uh, taking life so seriously, and knowing that everything will flow just the way it should flow. Just like the ocean flows, no matter what gets in this way, it just keeps going, and you are the ocean. So let me do a little recap. So we, we speak about living in the uh, fifth dimensional, um, fifth dimensional uh, state of mind. And it's knowing that time is an illusion. It's living present. Dropping these labels. Getting out of this old paradigm of, um, you know, certain things. Even this old paradigms we have with um, roles and what you're supposed to do at certain ages. And I, what I noticed is that a lot of women go through this panic thing. They go through this thing as, uh, oh, my gosh, I'm getting older. I haven't found a king yet. I haven't had kids yet. Live in the moment. Have you ever stopped and asked yourself, maybe you came to this 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 planet and it wasn't meant for you to have kids? Maybe that's not how it was supposed to be destined. But because you're going by society's standards and focusing on what Shaquita and what and Beyonce and, and, and Rihanna and all them other people doing, you know what I'm saying? You focusing on how society structures stuff can't even live in your own reality. So those are just a couple of things that I've been experiencing on this um this fifth dimensional you know mind frame and state of mind. Just realizing that this is my life. And when you get into the fifth dimension, you have so many different perspectives and so many different possibilities that you, it's easy for you to manifest stuff, although some things are out of your control because some things are already set in stone on what you wanted to do here. Oh, and the next thing I want to add is, um, is um, you know, releasing things from different lives on different timelines, timeline. You know, releasing stuff from the past because you have to think about it. The past is the past. Okay, when you was in fifth grade, you got bullied. And your mom and your dad abused you. I'm not saying that those instances might not have been painful at that time. But it has came and it has left. And you can't change the physical situation. But what you can change is the outcome of your mental health. And seeing that everything happens for a reason. So just releasing any karmic ties that you may have in your ancestry line. 
to releasing things that maybe your ancestors did or our ancestors have did. Releasing things that maybe your brother or your mother or your grandma have did in the past, releasing it so it frees up your karmic debt. You know, releasing stuff that you, releasing things that you're not even sure that you did. Sometimes we hurt people and we don't even know that we hurt them. So just, you know, having a little mantra or having a little affirmation of, you know, releasing um, things that we may have said and done and hurt people with. Because the more you free up and the more you release all this baggage, the more light comes in and the more you can control this reality. And the more life is so simple. Every day becomes a blissful day. Every day is an adventure to me. There's not a day that is not adventurous to me. And everything is love and everything is bliss, you know. Um, even the little dark moments that I have when I have to go within and, you know, my, 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 my demons are coming up and things that I try to hush under and forget, you know, um, is there. I embrace it. And so that brings me into the other thing. Living in the present moment is when something comes up, because right now a lot of our emotional baggage or a lot of things we hide in and maybe, you know, being insecure or subconscious or, you know, or being jealous or anxious or whatever it might be, is starting to surface. And so the thing is to do is surrender to it. Don't judge it. Don't be like, oh, man, I'm being jealous again. I told myself I wasn't going to be jealous again. Surrender to it and examine it. Observe it. What made you jealous? See, why did that make you jealous? But observe it, but don't judge it. Let it pass through. Have the emotion. The thing is not to uh, get rid of the emotions or to shame the emotions. It's to balance and work with the emotions. So let if you got, if you angry, let that anger out. If you got to go buy a punching bag to punch the bag, if you got to beat on some drums, if you got to dance, if you got to go and chop some wood, let that anger out. Don't hold it in and don't judge it. Of course, don't go beating on your wife or your kids or harming anybody, but let that anger out. Embrace it. It's you. So letting situations pass through you. Don't let that, because these situations are energy. So what happens is that you get this trapped energy in your heart. And you don't want these trapped energies in your heart. You know, you want your heart to be free. So let life pass through you. Um, and so, yeah, so let life pass through you. And, and one more thing, I'm probably going to have to make another video because my phone's about to die. But love every part of you. Love your inner child. Love the fat woman or man inside of you. Love, if you a man, love the lesbian inside of you or the woman inside of you. If you a woman, love that gay man inside of you or the man inside of you. We all have different aspects and different personalities and different entities because we're all and we're everything. We exist on different timelines, you know, except everybody, except, except that lady who always cleans every damn day or that person who late, likes, you know, I don't know, to, uh, baby dolls. I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff together right now. But love every aspect of you and express it. You need all those aspects to operate. So, you know, my one of my one of my predominant um uh entities that, that I operate was is a lady named Abigail. She loves to cook. Abigail loves to cook. She likes to cook with love. And it's kinda like the fat lady in me, because she is kinda like plump and thick. Um, but she loves to cook and she loves to make sure everybody eats. And she, and she likes to cook with love. And she's very nurturing and caring. She's like the big mama. You know, so that's one. I got a seven-year-old little girl where sometimes I act out. And I kind of throw tension tantrums when I don't get my way. But I process those emotions and I let myself do it. And then I, and then after I process it, I, I have to sit back and be like, well, why are you, you know, you can't always get your way. So, you know, just being aware. And I'm going to wrap this up because my phone's about to die. But being aware of you, the universe speaking to you every second, minute, millisecond on the clock. When I mean universe, you can refer it to God, Allah, your higher self, whoever, whatever name or label you want to put on it. Whatever you want to put on it. I just want you to know that that force, that omnipresent talks to you every second 
pay attention to when, even if you're talking to a crackhead or a wino, listen to what everybody says because what you have to still realize is that the body is a vessel. So spirit works through those people to deliver you a message. Everything is a message. It could be on your kid's cartoon. It could be you and Starbucks on the computer and the table next to you is saying something. There might be a dead snake that shows up in your yard. There might be two white birds that pass by you when you're thinking if you should apply for that job. Shoot, the wind might blow a certain way. God is always talking to you. Always. So that's another mindset for being in that fifth dimensional mindset is that you'll see that God is always speaking and communicating to you. And you'll also start to notice that telekinesis, you know, tapping into that source consciousness and being able to really know when somebody's going to call you or what somebody's thinking about. Um, but my phone's going to die since I got 5%. I feel like I got most of, you know, my interpretation and um, what I view and see the fifth dimension um, as being and what I perceive it as, as such, as I as I spoke. Um, I hope that it's touched some of you. And I'm not sitting here trying to be like, this is my truth and this is the only truth and don't believe into anything else. If it resonates with you, it resonates with you. And I'm glad that it can resonate for you. So I hope you enter and understand my message today. And I love everybody. Um, I love myself. I love myself. And when you love yourself, I can love everyone. Um, I'm about to get out here with Yimmy Ya and uh, give her this offering and um, just do some, some more cleansing and healing of myself. Uh, right now, I kind of escape winter. So I'm still kind of hibernating, although I'm in this sunny, beautiful weather, I'm still hibernating. So uh, I've been kind of laying low, laying low. So um, I'm going to be popping more in the summer, more in the springtime. But I'm still cleansing and purging and healing myself. So um, everybody have a magical, magical day. And at any time of the day that you feel like you're stressed or you're down or things are just getting to you, close your eyes. Take three deep, deep breaths. Open up your chest. Extend your chest out. Put your head back and let the love and the light enter through your temple and enter through your heart. And just expand in your vessel. Know that love is the only only answer. Look at that. I got bees flying around me. But okay, y'all. I love you. And hey, I'll do another video in Divine Speech. Take care.